power sources for small things are too big. Your cell phone is mostly battery. Your laptop is mostly battery. If we can find a way to use hydrocarbons like methane or gasoline or diesel, if we can find a way to get the energy out and into electricity in a small scale, it'll provide smaller power sources than we can have now. There's approximately one billion people without fresh water, and so if we can come up with simple, cost-effective systems, hopefully we can help people around the world out. There are an amazing amount of surfaces that corrode due to water, so the surface of your car, airplanes. If those surfaces were covered in some sort of water-repellent coating or uh, sheets of plastic, then that surface wouldn't corrode and much less time and energy and money would be spent fixing those surfaces after they have corroded due to water damage. The overall goal is to be able to fabricate parts at the nanoscale. So that's something at a very, very small scale, something you typically couldn't see with the human eye, but which would still be useful in computers or in biology or in electrical systems, mechanical parts. Um, all these things are sort of going small scale, and so you need to be able to control how your parts are moving at that scale. When, say, someone is injured, they walk asymmetrically. So these tools will hopefully be able to detect that and tell us when it's happening, why it's happening, and hopefully how to fix it. One of the great things about my project is I get to work with four principal investigators on my project, so my advisor in biomechanical engineering. There's also another MEXI uh, professor in dynamics who is on our project, and we also have a kinesiology professor that I work with, an anthropology professor who I actually work with just as close as my advisor. Then we have a, a statistics professor as well who's in psychology. All the professors share a lot, and they want to advance the knowledge, so they share their equipment, their knowledge, their time, and that's, that's great. There's no competition. You don't keep this piece of equipment all to yourself. You let anyone who needs to use it, use it. He's very accessible, actually. Uh, so we talk just about every day through email, and once every week, once every two weeks, we'll meet in person and discuss how things are doing in the lab. The kind of environment that I think he's created, you're not a, uh, afraid to ask questions, and people work together very, very well. It's a really work-friendly environment. When I go talk to him, I kind of get re-inspired, and he's very good at motivating you and making, making you remember how much you like what you're doing and giving you some, some motivation to go back into the lab. The facilities for the engineering are really spectacular. We have numerous buildings for every sort of discipline. The facilities are unbelievable. The Granger Library in particular. I've never seen engineering library that magnitude. The town surprised me because I didn't expect there to be a wide variety of types of restaurants and music. It's small enough that it's not busy and polluted and like a big city, but it's big enough that there's plenty to do. That's the greatest thing about Illinois, is that it's got everything that a city can offer without all of the increased chaos of being in a city.